All right. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, my stream deck. It's acting slowly. Good morning. Hello. Pay their lamp to see you. Sun. Baguettes. And dusk light. You are kind of bad, so you're coming here. What? Why? Funny boy, it is. Yay! Why did you get banned? What did you do? That's funny to me. <laughs> Confess your crimes. <clears throat> Mortar. But yeah, it's time. It's time. Woo! <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> enough of that. Good morning, everyone. It is time for more reverse, but this time the other reverse. <laughs> Not bakery reverse, but uh, whatever the fuck is going on in reverse 1999 reverse. I refund that I jump pack it got me negative so it got banned after a while. Oh no. <laughs> uh, wait in, in in reverse or in another game. Let me see, make sure that all the all my announcements posted properly and make my my Twitter post also like now live. Come watch me suffer. All right. Um, Twitter. Do 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 do. Here we go. Also, I couldn't get a thumbnail from like whatever is coming because my friends were like. Mm. <laughs> So I'm gonna assume they were too spoilery and they didn't give me anything. So I just used uh, the one with 37 biting regulars because that's very any uh, really iconic moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everything's looking good. So let me open the game and then we'll jump straight into it. How is everyone doing today? How is your Sunday? While I wait for this to load. <laughs> you might get banned soon. Why? <laughs> Very roommate energy. <laughs> Doing good so far. Let's go. <laughs> I'm probably gonna continue on Walker with Coco later. So I'm excited. <laughs> Loading. No data will be used during loading. Please wait. Alright, here we are. Start. I farmed so much this week. Do you think the stream will working? Oh yeah, I do that usually during the week. I listen to streams during during work. Though lately I've been what's this? Yeah, give me give me whatever that is. Lately I've been um, mostly. I either listen to, this week I've been mostly listening to either ASMR or like to horror stories. Doing <laughs> uh, work. There's these two channels I follow, one that tells like quote unquote real horror stories. You never know with the internet if they're all real, but I mean they're all 
uh, grounded in reality. And then I listen to this other channel that just r reads stories that people that people write, you know, like kind of like SCP kind of things. Uh, but you know, I'll put on the music, the sound effects and whatnot, and the narration and everything. So it's pretty cool to listen to. And then I'm like, damn, I wonder why I can't sleep. <laughs> nah, not really, but... Wait, what can I buy with this? Ah... I see. Good old creepypastas, yes. What's the channels? Oh, yeah, no, I was just saying that I... There's this, there's two channels I follow. That one just tells, like... Just, like, short 15, 20-minute videos going over, like, quote-unquote, real-life stories that people share, but, like, you know, like, kind of narrating them. And then there's this other one I follow that makes, like, longer videos. That narrates stories that people write, you know, like creepy pastas and the sort, that sort of thing. And some of them are really good and he makes a really good job. So I'm like, nah, damn, I have fun. I got a lot of fun listening to them. <laughs> and then I get creeped out. <laughs> but it is what it is. My computer is kind of acting up a little. I don't know why. Seems to be doing good now. Alright, let me get onto studio mode to make sure that the game is showing. And it's not because I was playing the other reverse yesterday. Okay, there we go. Exit studio mode. Hello, Panzer! But yes, it is. It is revenge time. It is revenge time. You're really gonna jump straight to it. I don't really have that much to say. It's funny, I don't really have that much to say on Sundays. <laughs> Compared to like other days of the week. I'm just like, you know, I everything everything happened already this week and I already talked about it. So now it's just just gaming time. Woo! Time to listen to funny anime girl while drumming. Let's go. But yeah, with that said, uh, yeah, let's go. So here we are. <laughs> are we watching the folks struggle again? I don't know. Oh, it's her, yeah. I keep thinking and thinking about how to hold a party and join it. <sighs> if someone opens my head, you know, just open it. You'll see the draft of party plans all over the floor like brains. Thank you for that insight, balloon party. Thank you so much. It's her birthday, by the way. Everyone say happy birthday to Balloon Party. <laughs> she is something else. <laughs> Please change Balloon Party. I have them on random. She she just showed up. Uh, but, I, but yeah, I have my 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 guys like built. The viscera in the balloon? No, thank you. I would not like to touch the viscera in the balloon. <laughs> Happy birthday! Can we go now? We need to finish the boss. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, let's go. Uh, this wasn't right, yeah. I don't remember if we go straight into the fight. We were on the underground. Oh yeah, we do go straight into the fight. Which was the team I was using? This team. See, they're old. Leveled up. 
Uh, I, they're all resonance 7 or 8 in Shaman's case, just because I had extra and I was like, you know, might as well. Um, I need to fix though, speaking of, wait, I need to fix... I need to fix Balloon's party. I forgot to do it. Her resonance. I have, a, I have a guy thingy that I follow. Where is it? Have it been here? My sister sent it to me. Let's get this over here. Balloon party, doko. Uh, because I have it on resonance 7, so I need to change the... Uh, I need to change the, the cubes, the tetris. I just copy paste what I see. If anyone has a problem, um, go take it with the guide makers. <laughs> I accept no criticism. That thing, uh, this thing here, this thing here, and this other one here. This thing here, and I need a aha. Uh -huh. There we go. And make me sure I have well, Shamanus well. one properly. Th let me see. I have them all done properly. I'm pretty sure I made them. I was only missing balloon party, but just just to double check. Uh huh. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, who else am I using? Lilia. Don't be in and out. You're bugging me. Where's Lilia here? Ah, oh, Lilia, loco. Uh, seven, eight, attack build. Uh huh. All good. And Bikram, Bikram, Bikram Bloom. I'm not good at dealing with visitors. If you... Uh, I'm pretty sure she's fine. Also, yes. Okay. Okay, we're good to go then. Is it the Google Docs guide? Yeah, is it what that's on an Excel spreadsheet? <laughs> the exact same guy, there's only so much you can do to min max resonance. Yeah. And I leveled up the 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 la the, the light course, I was gonna say the side cubes. So Last time we were doing not too bad with this team, despite the, all of them being on Resonance 5. <laughs> with Psyche using like 20. So let's see, let's see how we do now. <laughs> the hunt begins? No. The peace agreement no longer works. The conditions are not clear. A reckless attack may lead to the punishment of the Bangle. I have to be careful with the method and timing of attacking. Oh yeah, right, and the first the first character that attacks cannot attack in this turn, so here I think we went for this one first. I remember we went for finger ladies. Yeah, because you had the critical tech. Look at them making damage now. <laughs> I can't make the call. 
There we go. One down. Now here we need to get rid of the big guy, I believe. The body is melting. I'm gonna let the text run through since it's been like a while. It turns into seed. So this is how the manners fight against the restrictions. They sacrifice one man to feed another. Now, yeah, I think uh, I think it was this guy. It's the one that takes, yeah, the one that takes Moxie from reality damage. Because all my attacks are reality damage. Yeah. Howdy, Suni. How are you in this fine day today? Mm. I hear something. Fine. Don't be so serious. Hold on to that. Oh oh. Where is my healing? Thank you. And... My car is starting motors in Boston. What? What happened? I don't want to use the ult yet, he's almost dead. Down he goes! You turn the key and there's nothing? Oh no! Is this some kind of ritual? Okay. One can see. Of oh yeah, we had an unconscious Tori song with us. Thirty-seven. Can you hear me? And now we get rid of the finger lady also. I hear so that's your idea. Radio waves are everywhere. I said hello. Wanna watch the aerial stunts? Whose heart is beating so loud? <laughs> Right wing. Come on, Don't die already. Oh, good for you. Give me healing. Or I guess I guess not. I hear something. Oh, yeah. Fine. Talking now comes to go down. Break it. Break it. Down it goes. But yeah, there's like nothing, nothing, not even when the... Was turned into geometric symbols. Is it because of the cave? So the seed is the form of Manus Vindictae. The fogs transcend all matters. <gasps> now the transformation begins! But yeah, I was saying, there's like nothing, nothing, like not even the... the <laughs> You got sometimes when like the battery is dead. 
Things are not as simple as I thought. I must make a plan and exercise great care. All right. Nothing. Man, that sucks. I'm gonna save the elves for next turn. Wanna watch the aerial stunts? We're just gonna throw them all in one go. It's cold. Uh -oh. The battery seems fine. Huh. Hold on to that. Let's go. <laughs> alt after alt after alt. Give me a hand, friends. I can't do this alone. Swallow my exhaust. Good morning, cat. Alright, 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 alright. Uh, give me more healing, thank you. Doing good, just need to survive. <sighs> That's the hard part. Hey, you said the hardest part is surviving. I tell myself every morning. Get some different things. I hear something. Well, that's your idea. Where's the party start? Agents have gone. It's called common sense. The story begins. Yeah, that's the old uh, that I'm looking for. That's why I, I threw this now. But on parts, this ultimate gives me some resistance, so hopefully. Yes! Okay, we got past the 30%! We're doing this! Hey, Lusafi! Alright, let's see. 
we can can end him. Let's go! Form of manus vindicte. It's more distorted than I thought. First try. It's all over. It's over. It's time to say goodbye. Don't miss me, really. I'll be back. <laughs> now we can finally finish the story. We're gaming! Oh, that was great. That felt so satisfying. <laughs> Do you prep for the next boss? There's no next boss. Is there? <laughs> I have Regulus inside three. <laughs> Ready for phase four. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was told this is the the last, and then the, there's no there, there's no like big boss, boss fights. On the on the epilogue thingy they have, but yeah, finally story time! Woo! So let's see how this island adventure finishes. Invaders in black, that which obscures the sea, that which engulfs the clouds, comes heavily. Finally, we're done with the biggest time for the mid real. The manor suddenly emerged everywhere like ants. Lilia and I couldn't take them all down. I would have acted sooner if you hadn't told me not to pick fights. A mad pawn roars and jumps on them, but is immediately being pulled off and knocked out by Lilia. His limbs twitch horribly, and his body soon shrivels. Belin, all they want is to attack, even if their blood will be sucked out. Insane! Insane! Back when we were spying on them, I told Sanetta to screw the peace agreement through the radio. I knew those geometry psychos and the manas would go mad sooner or later. <laughs> geometry psychos. They were not that crazy when they were solving the math problems. Damn! What the hell happened down there? I love the censoring. The cave is the key to be immune to the storm. There is a cave on this island which has the same effect as my suitcase. That's what the man is after. Oh. What? But... but hasn't she also put on the stone bangle? Even if she can break free from that bangle, there is no way she'd let her followers keep carrying out suicide attacks. <laughs> oh, you really think that? <laughs> and if she has signed that peace agreement, how will she take the cave from a pyron? Verton? On Verton's back, the Seven opens her eyes. She puts out a finger and points it to the sky. In the eternal and transcendental sky, Several dazzling flare stars are lining up. What's that? What? What's what? What's happening? <laughs> are you sure, Lily? I will carry out a kamikaze attack for our cat. <laughs> the half period is in deadly silence. Only a visitor is still browsing the classic book. I'm afraid you have overstayed your welcome, Ms. Arcana. I have to regrettably remind you not to overstep the boundaries, despite the great help you've given to us. I take not thought for needless disputes. But you ask a simple question. She gently closes the book. The great philosophers. Ye seek the ancient wisdom, follow the sage's teaching, and pursue the noble virtues. You are separated from the world for thousands of years. And you have not gained the human's understanding 
Nor have you sought for it. I find pleasure in this allegory of the cave. However, hast this been unto thee? That who led us to the exile in this cave. What would they climbing? Music. The flare stars are approaching. They move in an orderly manner as they are a group of swift other. Oh, those are planes. Those are planes. We're getting bumped. What are they? I've never seen these before. Why are they here? These things should not appear on this island. The eternal and ever circulating current has been cut off upon the silent sea. A fleeting black is breaking the waves and sailing toward the island. Sinato, did you bring the human's army here? Wait, that's how it ends? <laughs> that's how it ends? I mean, we still have the epilogue thingy. It has like a little... But I don't know if it's after or like what, but we'll see. But like, that's how the chapter ends? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was such a line to end things on, though. What's this? A recording. Gold Prospector. Speculators gather on the beach, trying to dig shiny objects from the sand. Those things don't belong to them. Drive them away. <coughs> ah. Let's go back to my classic team. Reggie! Salud, gracias. Bless, thank you. Oh, I have Auro on. Hold on to that. How's the reversing going? We beat the boss. Um, but then... But then war crimes happened. So... <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about that. Give me a hand, friends. I can't do this alone. Sonetto, Sonetto brought an invading army to the island. I don't think it was Sonetto, but I also it's like who else could it have been? Arcana was did say something something sassy. So I'm wondering if it was her. But also I'm like, why would she do that? Hey Tenchi! Oh yeah, Paris and 37 was bombed. I'm sure she's fine.
Come on, stop silencing my heater. Your idea. Left hand up. They dropped the treasure they found and scattered. Geometric pendant? A geometric ornament that someone lost. It can be submitted as a task item in story trails. It has never been caught in the tide, but now it is moist. Moist. <coughs> X to doubt. You think it was Sonero? I don't think it was Sonero. Now let's see what this is. Low limiting. Oh, that's Matilda. So we're back here. Guess we're gonna see what's going on on the on the other end of things? Question mark. Okay, let's see. Lovely meeting. With a shake of her head, the little white duck finds the gold crest. Oh, the 37 is fine thing. Uh, sh sh she's fine. She's fine. Wow. So this is the library in Purton School. It was like kind of 100%. She's cooking with 60 in the confrontation. Yeah, that's also why, why I think it was her. So many people here. Hmm. They're probably around my age. Or like she made something, she she arranged something. I doubt they're working together because you know Manus and humans they don't really get along. But uh, I could see her like doing something so like people will know of the island, or like think it a a threat or something. And cause it to attack. And I don't know, all because Arcana wants the things on the cave, I guess. Hey, Frithy. A gorgeous sap green dress jumps into the library of SPDM. Its owner keeps talking in a sing song tone, like a chirping gold crest. <laughs> We've also got this many shelves in the library of Sotheby's Manor. Are there any alchemy workshops and potion warehouses here, like in our manor? <laughs> She's such a rich girl. Hey, Mango Tango. The young lady stands on tiptoe, looking around this place curiously. Where can I find Miss Buenish? Madam Z told me to come here, but she didn't give any other clues. Oh, the people here really need Mr. Teacatler, who is always nice and warm to the guests. Just twist his teapot ear, then he can take you anywhere. If not so, placing a Luckaday potion at the entrance would help as well. Reverse collapse 1999. Uh, well, we, you, you, you just missed out on the war crimes. So <laughs> I guess it's going good. <laughs> if I had made it before I came, Miss Buenish and I might have met by now. Or she will just pop up behind me. Are you looking for me? There she is. Miss Buanish. Oh my word! Oops. That was too loud. Where are my manners? Sotheby straightens the wrinkles on her dress and gives out her hand like a real lady. Oh, nice to meet you. Are you Miss Buanish? The other girl nods haughtily. Her uniform speaks for herself. It seems to be a historic first meeting for them. That's fantastic! How did you find me? Did you see me in the Oniromancy? Or through a crystal orb? Either way, it is the great Arcanum. <laughs> I'm much greater than that. Look at you, dressed as if you'd just been to a ball. You are as eye-catching as the pigment board on a sketch. I saw you the moment I came into the library. <laughs> Good night, old roll. Hello. Why are they so cute? I don't know. They're adorable. <gasps> Does the foundation hold balls too? No, I'm saying. Is it true that I'm the virgin girl like that? Never mind. Madame Z told me you wanted to look up the materials on the mysterious school that believes in numbers here. That's right. 
Miss Mossel told me she will thoroughly check the documents in the Foundation Archive. So I'll go through the books in the SPDM library. Impressive is talking capabilities, Matilda. Yeah, she has a lot. She has lots of practice. If we can find anything about that school, we can be of more help to Bertin and her team. I'm sorry, Miss Sotheby, but I'm afraid the situation is going to disappoint you. While you spend the last hour looking for Ticketler's ear, the kind-hearted monitor assistant already gained the valuable access to the library. But I haven't found any record regarding the mysterious school that believes in numbers yet. Like a bolt out of the blue. Oh, but, but Miss Mossel said there are so many books here that they can cover the entire back of a Stronsay beast. That's a bit exaggerated, but um, she's right. <laughs> Do you say that's a bit exaggerated? What do you mean she's right? Nevertheless, the librarian was transferred to a more important position years ago due to the storm. Many old books are not yet sorted. Some even went missing in the chaos. The only relevant materials I could find are the stories of Pythagoras and some books on mathematical theorems. But I don't think they have anything to do with Vertin's issue. I love how she says Vertin. Vertin. What Matilda sees now is a pair of tear dimmed eyes. Happens. I can't do anything to help them. Oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> Please stop being emotional. It doesn't work on this professional member of the foundation. <laughs> Of being emotional. <laughs> she looks away and clears her throat like a grown up. <clears throat> Without field investigation permission, I can't take you out to collect information. But in fact, there is still another reference room only known to the most outstanding monitor assistant. Look at her smug face. Other students in the library cast disgruntled glances at them. Shh, shh, shh. It's a violation to make noises in the library. Please follow me, Miss Sotheby. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> they need to kiss right now. <laughs> uh, Matilda needs to get over her sonero crush first. Tall shelves. Unfamiliar surroundings. An impossible mission. The girls walk through the shelves like fish swimming through coral. Thank you so much, Miss Buenish. You mentioned bull. I haven't heard that word for a very long time. I remember what Mr. Carson, my butler, had taught me. He said, express your gratitude to fair ladies by holding a <laughs> grand ball. <laughs> Mr. Carson know what it's about. I'll write to my father and ask for a brand new, unsinkable, and maneuverable rock and roll park. I'm sure he will gladly say yes. Maneuverable rock and roll park? Yes. We can hold a twist ball on it when Burton and her team are back. Please allow me to say no. The monitor assistant of SPDM will never participate in such an inelegant activity. What do you mean? Wait, did you just say Verten and her team? Oh, she's blushing. Oh, 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 she's blushing. Hmm? <clears throat> we can talk about the ball later. Yes, Matilda. Sonetto is in Verten's team. The kind-hearted Matilda Buanish will try her best to help you with the task. But, uh, of course, it's only out of her sense of responsibility, not for some personal reasons. Uh-huh, not for some personal reasons. They go faster and faster. Finally, they reach their destination. Unnecessary information room. To patch the fragmented eras in the future, and to store the currently unimportant files and, rep and reports. 
People built this reference room in the shape of a box with grey and white walls. During this awful time, which may last for ages, people call it the footnote of history. Here we are. The reference room storing unnecessary information. It's a place ignored by most staff. Even so, this careful, reliable monitor assistant will not let go of any details. She knocks on the rusty sign heartily. I hereby officially appoint you as the chief assistant of monitor assistant of SPDM. I will take my responsibility and teach you how to become a devoted foundation member. <laughs> She's so proud of herself. Matilda pulls off the cloth covering the archive cabinet. Dust rises in the air. Here is your first task. Feed through these unsorted old files. All of them. The monitor assistant takes a dusty file from the cabinet. The paper inside has already turned yellow. I have searched all the archived ones. These are the last part. Most of them are discarded administrative documents, low priority materials, and substandard reports written by rookie investigators. By the way, you should know I didn't sort any of them out for you, and they don't necessarily have what you want. Where do you point that out, Matilda? It's all right. Leave them to me. I love reading. Hm. You'd better do. <laughs> Here's the key. Keep it safe. You can sit on the cushions there when you sort out the files. I I don't want your dress to stain the stone bench. Mm-hmm. I'll go see if I missed any files. Listen, this monitor assistant will test you on your familiarity with these files when she's back. <laughs> oh, Matilda. No change. Three hours later. Looks like I didn't miss any relevant files. Phew, quite a long day. I doubt if that spoiled lady can finish all the materials. She must have been bored and fallen asleep, waiting for her tea kettler in the dream. Oh, you're underestimating suddenly, Matilda. I, I have a feeling that you're gonna regret that. It takes much more than dancing at balls to be a foundation investigator. She is an alchemist, after all. I'll send her back to that teacher when she wakes up. In the end, it will be the kind-hearted Matilda who finishes the task for her. Being a great monitor assistant comes with great responsibility. Again, Matilda gently pushes the door open. Surprisingly, she is welcomed with an energetic greeting. Oh, the Spanish! Standing on a ladder, Sotheby gives her a big smile with a stack of files in her hand. The files she didn't finish reading are scattered on the ground, while the others have been well organized in the cabinet. You... you didn't fall asleep! Did you sort out these files? Hmm? Yes! And I love these books in uncommon shapes. There are so many wonderful stories. <laughs> Come on, Matilda. She's a rich girl, but she's educated. I often read books with Sasano when father wasn't at home. We read and read until the red bomb waves woke up the sun. Moreover, these files are much easier than Miss Moisson's reading to us. Here, the gentleman from River Conway tamed a whole group of Avanks. How marvelous is that? Oh, okay. Looks like you meet the basic <laughs> requirements for being a rookie investigator. Tu es plus ou moins qualifié pour être mon assistant en chef. And there goes Matilda's plan. Yep. The young lady doesn't pay much attention to the mumbles from the monitor assistant. She is busy announcing her big discovery. Report. It tells a lot about the storm and the numbers. Oh, will this be helpful to Burton? Hmm? Show it to me. She takes a pile of yellowed paper from Sotheby. 
This neat and orderly written report has no beginning or end. Obviously, the author is a meticulous person. I have to say, it is undoubtedly a violation to submit such a report, but it will be a travesty of the truth and human sense if I cover it up. Some war crimes, perhaps? Oh yeah, you missed the war crimes. <laughs> so the island got bombed, and 37 maybe got bombed. <laughs> maybe drop the game after losing 50-50? Now, that it happens. Sense, justice. justice. They have always been the creeds in my heart. And are now the reason why I have decided to write down the whole thing. I don't think we know this voice. But we were the ones committing them? N no, we were the ones that have had the war crimes committed on them. <laughs> Unfortunately. A long time has passed since the first attack of the most severe crisis in our time. But we are still wondering, what on earth does it mean? That was the eve of the millennium, of which no one had any memories, illogically. The next day, time was already reversed to 1996, the moment we opened our eyes. We walked out of the building made of grey and white marble as usual, hardly aware that the sun we based in was from another time. Our survival was unexpected and almost unbelievable in such a calamity which swept the globe. Why did the headquarters of the Foundation survive the reverse? Why couldn't we find our younger selves in the outside world? Did any other region survive it as we did? What was the cause behind this calamity? Oh, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but it's interesting that they bring it up, that they can't... Their younger selves are not outside. Which, I mean, on one hand, it makes sense. Because, I mean, they're here. They didn't get reversed. But also, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a strange, you know? Because, I mean, what happened then to your, to your parents? Did they not have you? <laughs> Interesting. War crimes are all fun and games until someone pulls the Uno reverse card. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know, nor did anyone else. Things remained unclear until time was reversed again. This time, we all witnessed that rain in the 80s. Do your friends still remember playing with you, you find them? Oh, that's another interesting question. I think so. She says in a trembling voice. This monitor assistant, who always claims to have a cool head, has never panicked so much. It's a report written by someone who witnessed the storm. And it has recorded the storms before Burton became the timekeeper. Pog. Time to reverse to Onga Bunga times. I wonder if we'll get so back and like we'll be fighting dinosaurs or something. That would be funny. Oh, oh, hey, it's the same. But now it's like a picture. Huh. So good science. After a terribly, after a terribly heavy down power, it's hard to stay calm. Still the serious mode, yeah. Before she became the timekeeper. Or if they will go back to the time before air, oh that would be crazy. <laughs> Bertin is fist fighting an evil T-Rex. That would be amazing though. Imagine. 
So Vertim wasn't born a timekeeper. She didn't tell you that? Wait, no one is born a timekeeper. It's not an inherited title. Anyway, this report includes the secret chronology only accessible to the core members of the Foundation. You can only check it under the supervision of the Monitor Assistant before you become a qualified investigator. Go back to Big Bang Fight God, hell yeah. Matilda dusts off the folder carefully. No matter what the reason is, it shouldn't have been shoved in this dusty room like rubbish. To evaluate its uh, authenticity and risk, the genius Matilda Buanish will fulfill her duty as the monitor assistant and carry out a thorough inspection of this report. If you agree to this resolution, please nod, Assistant Sotheby. The speech is full of terminologies Sotheby has never heard of, but it doesn't matter. Based on the tone of the speech, she has already decided how to answer. Her... Yes. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Oh, that was so, that so neat. was 1985. A gloomy, miserable night compared to that peaceful morning in 1996, when we were only bothered by confusion. Don't blame my school library like that, Matilda. <laughs> We didn't expect time to be reversed again. Nor did we understand the consequence. Even now, I still remember Paulina's desperate cry. One of her hands was already inside the safe area when she fell at the entrance to the headquarters. And that was the only part of her left to us the next second. Ah! The only legacies we found were an engagement ring on that hand. Ah! Imagine witnessing that. Wonderful. <laughs> and her favorite blue polka dot scarf, which we used to wrap her remains in the end. Her remains, a hand. <sighs> to be honest, I admire those who still remained calm and sympathized with the arcanists on the edge of mental breakdown. It had nothing to do with the one-quarter Arcanist blood in my body. It was only the kind of empathy which all mankind would share out of instinct in the face of a hopeless calamity. One-quarter Arcanist blood. Okay, so this person is not a pure blood Arca Arcanist. We lost many, too many colleagues. In the materials they sent back, we even saw all the horrifying phenomena, such as one's veins turning into electric wires. A what? Since then, the storm, a word simply taken from visual observation, has been used to refer to the calamity. Of course, we can have a word for the calamity itself. But what words should we use to conclude all the absurdity and panic? Before the storm, we were all familiar with time. It was supposed to be a straight line connecting the past and the future. What a storm? Oh, you're not familiar with the game. Uh, they call us what they call the, the storm when they refer to us the storm. It's a um, a rain that falls backwards and reverses time. We followed the line to move forward. We broke free from ignorance. We built civilizations. We developed technologies. We promoted the well-being of mankind. And we improved our living conditions step by step. We were so sure that we were making progress on the right path. But then, the path was taken away all of a sudden. Oh, time. Our closest old friend, where are you taking us? Back to the two most painful war times in the 20th century. The era when no one had ever heard the hiss of steam engines. Or the century when mankind was yet to be enlightened. So far, 
Mankind has achieved a lot in history. Dynamos, automobiles, flyovers, railways, hospitals, poor houses. But if it goes on like this, what is the point of all the efforts we have made? Now we are like a shipwreck left on the island of time, witnessing the fall of the whole modern world in the unstoppable tsunami. Wait, I got that. I got something in my eye. Ah! <laughs> Alright, we're good, I think, for now. I just get excited about the character until I forget the main story. <laughs> I see, I see. Even though the Foundation has lost a lot of staff members, they are still doing fine compared to Laplace. My younger brother was a good example. He was the most sensible person I have ever known. On the first day of the second reverse, he told me, in a calm manner, at least we have reaffirmed that Newton was right. There was never an arrow of time in classical mechanics. <laughs> Neither in relativity nor quantum mechanics. How is that being calm? <laughs> How is he normally if this counts as being calm? <laughs> that means this is absolutely normal. Whether the time goes backwards or forwards, even if it starts spinning around like a tabletop football player. They're not against the law of physics. We can go back in time and give Poincaré a medal of great profit. No, that is coping. <laughs> the next day, he almost fell off the sixth floor due to excessive drinking. Mm hmm. <laughs> All the perceptions of time and space developed to this day were overthrown. We couldn't find any theories to explain the storm in any existing researches. There could only be two reasons for this situation. Either we've been completely wrong all the time. Or we've come to a brand new world. And this new world can never make sense in the way of science. Or that of physics. It cannot be verified by an independent third party. And it is impossible to be comprehended through reasoning. Is it true that we have been going the wrong way? Is it true that those once proven wrong by history those arcanists who claim to possess gnosis are actually on the right path in fact the one who put an end to the chaos was indeed not a human this thing i had no idea what it was it claimed to be a machine which never stops working what it laughed at the limitations of our brains and the metaphysical mistakes we make ceaselessly but it did solve the most urgent issue. A system was built to tackle storm-relevant emergencies after it took charge of Laplace. The first measure it adopted was contacting all the existing branches of the foundations at the time to confirm the scale of available manpower. Then it built observation stations all over the globe to find if there were any other regions immune to the storm. After that, numerous officers responsible for deducing the cause of the storm were established. Even though there were countless disagreements during the research, at least we had taken the first step. A machine? I handed in the application to take part in this mission, determined to get rid of the fog in my mind. In 1986, I was assigned to the office in Egypt. All my friends came to the dock to see me off. A tea doll? <laughs> it's all connected. Because we knew it could be the final goodbye. Even though we were equipped with the emergency communication devices issued by Laplace, we were still not clear when the storm would assault us, or where we could hide nearby. What really scared me was not the threat to my life, but the possibility of dying ignorant. Then I boarded the ship to Alexandria from Athens, and that was when I met her. Her? William behind it all? Almost impossible to ignore that group of arcanists on the ship. Oh, is she gonna? Did she meet Arcana? 
There were about a dozen of them, all in eccentric stitched robes. They were followers of a strange school which mixes arcanum and mathematics. Ah, okay. No, this must be the... When the people on the island went out. Oh yeah, by the way, I did. I made six event, six uh, event, and there was a point in time where like some people in the island uh, constructed a ship and went out to explore like the regular human world, and then when when they were coming back, they got caught in the storm and like they all died. <laughs> I talk to them. No matter how much that conversation bewilders me now, I was more excited than confused at the time. They also survived the storm in 1996, and they noticed the unusual changes taking place in the world as well. That means I actually met another group of survivors from the Millennium. Wait, so I'm just checking my phone real quick because I'm I'm waiting for a package, so I won't leave it outside too long. The storm actually killed you, though. I mean, you could consider it as dead, I guess. It reverses you. It reverses you back to not existence. <laughs> oh yeah, Sophia did mention in the, in the main story, yeah, how they died on the ship. But uh, on, on the sixth story, you see like how when they build it and like they go out because they build it because they wanted to go out and explore. And then they were like when they they were already inside of the island, the storm comes and kills just kills them all. She stops turning the pages. Wait, wait. It unalives you, just not traditionally? Yeah, exactly. A school of Arcanists who survived the storm? And it makes Arcanum with mathematics? Sounds familiar, hmm? But yeah, it's like if you played or seen anything about Dead Stranding, you know how the the rain there makes time advance like forward very quickly. So this is basically the opposite. <laughs> My history teacher but I whoop my butt. I don't know what's happening in this story. <laughs> Reverse, if you will, haha. <laughs> Yay, thingies! I miss Norman Reedus and his packages. <laughs> He's coming back for Death Stranding too. I might play that on my own, I don't think... Death Stranding, I had fun with Death Stranding, but I don't think it's a very super great streaming game. Because, mo mostly because... There's a lot of times of just quietly going around from one place to another. <laughs> Tower of Babel. And I'm not that good at feeling the silence. Tower of Babel. Most of the time, language barriers are the least significant obstacles between people. A mixture of arcanum and mathematics. The ship on the Mediterranean. Unbelievable. Our investigator actually met this group of arcanists who believed in numbers. And even left such a precious record down on paper. Should restore the game even though my team is extremely outdated. I mean... I just cleared the boss. And like, my newest character is like Shamane. I just cleared the boss with Lilia, Shamane, Beacon, and Balloon Party, so <laughs> it's not as it's not as hard to like get updated in the game. Get your team built. 
I miss Bertin. <laughs> Me too. Does it mean we are close to being helpful to Virgin? I love how the only thing on Sotheby's mind is being helpful to Virgin. She's so sweet. I tell you, Eternity, she's too good. Eternity could solo. Damn! I wanna roll. I know there's gonna be a Tooth Fairy rerun. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna get her. The chief assistant of the monitor assistant lets her cheer. Certainly, it's what we deserve for all the efforts today. Hmm, but why did they leave such an important report in the reference room storing unnecessary information? Really? Yeah, yeah, she's coming, uh, yeah, she's coming next week or the week after. I'm not, I'm not sure when, but like she's coming soon. She's getting a rerun. Not the event though, just, just her, just, a, just her banner. So wish me luck, guys. <laughs> Did they miss put it here after the chaos of the storm? I don't know, Matilda. I don't know. I think they hid this for a reason in here. Putting her confusion aside, Matilda turns to the next page of the record. Among them, the most easygoing one was Hugh. All cards are still strong, but Lumpar is still a staple healer in my lineup, and I have Tooth Fairy. Yeah, like, I wasn't using Balloon Party because she was creepy, but, like, then I were, like, they were like, oh, like, she's, like, the best healer in the game, if you, um, aside from, like, Tooth Fairy. And I'm like, all right. And, mm, damn, how she kept me alive. He was an engineer as well as an arcanist. We shared the same preference for human technology, and that became our common topic. Hugh was in his thirties, red-haired, cheeks sunken, and deeply depressed due to some kind of eye disease. <gasps> this is Sophia's father! He was a decent man, with a prudent attitude, working at a desk most of the time. He reminded me of the Imperial miniature painting artists in the Sultan's palace. Most of them ended up blind after toiling for their life. He showed me the picture of his daughter. I don't have children, but I could feel his happiness as a father. <laughs> was, was indeed, was Sophia's father. <laughs> She's kept us alive and terrified. Yeah, true. Although I got along well with you, he seemed quite out of place among that group, which was actually led by her. Oh, this is for your six. I don't know what words to use to describe her. She was like a meteor shower, a tempest, or an unreasonable catastrophe itself. Her existence was just like her name. It was simple, yet implied a lot. Please forgive me for my cowardice. Even now, I don't have the courage to write down her name. If one would call that a name. Her name was Six. <laughs> In fact, she was quite a kind, warm-hearted person. Among all the unregistered arcanists I've met, she was one of the nicest ones towards the Foundation. And before being called Six, her name was Alma. She looked young even though I heard she had a daughter too. Besides, she still possessed the innocence of a child and that kind of excitement exclusive for genius. Ah, okay, no, 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 That's no. Right. It seems the whole world was like a sparkling toy to her. All right, now this is 37's mom. This is, 30, this is 37's mom, so okay, yeah, so we don't, I don't think we ever got her name. Yeah, the triangle in her hair. But yeah, they take, they basically, I mean, they, they have regular names, but like at one point in their lives, they get like 
a revelation or something or like they they studied they're like they're basically at a, an island full of greek philosophers you know so it's they're, it's kind of insane uh so at one point in their lives when they reach like the truth or like an understanding of themselves uh they find they they believe that everyone has their own number and once they find it they adopt their that number as their name So we have very colorful characters like 6 and 37 and 210. <laughs> Our communication was heart stirring at the beginning. Was that the bite of 37? <laughs> Real. It's on the thumbnail. Both of us were eager to find out what was happening. Like two shipwrecked victims grappling at each other on the sea. But I didn't have the slightest idea what she was talking about, actually. <laughs> the problem was not the typical communication issues between humans and arcanists. I was sure the language we used didn't pose any obstacles. But still, I couldn't understand any words of hers. I would believe that one is highly intelligent if one can name all the factors of 11,567 without thinking. But what this one said was illogical nonsense which no one could ever imagine. She claimed that there is a world of numbers, above all else, where the non-physical essences of all things exist in the form of timeless, absolute, unchangeable ideas, and that the physical world where the time flows is nothing but an appendage which has never been real or true. And that's why the chaos in this world is not worth any attention, and we should focus on what happened to the supreme existence. Huh. What an utter disaster combining modern maths with the ancient superstition. I saw another hubristic arcanist pretending to be the prophet by reliving Platonism. I don't even bother to mention the balderdash on soul numbers. Even the New Age movement could use some of her absurdity. But that was not yet the end. She even claimed to be aware of the exact year when the next reverse would happen. But when I asked her about it seriously, she said, My apologies. I've made an oath. I shall and only shall reveal the demonstration to people who have their own soul numbers. Sheesh! Got down! I'm not sure whether she was making fun of me or being serious, but I had this feeling that she was eager to tell me how she was granted the secret through a moment of afflatus. Wonderful voice, her, yeah. It seemed she just saw through the laws behind all things instead of finding them through logical deduction. Can't you see it? It is right in front of you. It could be, I guess it could be 37's VA, maybe. Just making a more, a more grown up voice. Yeah. He has a similar intonation. After I expressed my inability to comprehend her words 30 times, she finally gave up and proffered regrets. I'd rather take it as a new kind of humiliation. What really irritated me about her, however, was her contempt towards science and all the scientific research methods. As far as I'm concerned, the value of a theory lies in its reliability, universality, and generalizability. Our pursuit of the truth has laid the foundation of modern science, allowing us to change the world. Yet, in her eyes, the value of a theory lies in its beauty. I talked to her on the current situation, and I told her how we would save lives and preserve the hard-earned technology of mankind if we could find the pattern of the storm. It was of course not an easy thing to do, and would take enormous manpower, so I asked her sincerely to join the Foundation. Yet again she responded with contempt. She believed they would only become another military squad of the Foundations. Darling, maths are beautiful for their uselessness. Oh! 
That's why it remains noble and graceful in this sordid world, despite you humans' reckless action of using it to calculate ballistic. She turned down my invitation and left an unfairly negative comment on our storm observation project. The observation stations you built are destined to be toppled because their basis is the fragile world that follows the laws of physics. The efforts you've made are like nails on a sand beach, which will only be carried away by the next tidal wave. Wow, thank you so much! But I said, perhaps our efforts are in vain, but someone has to do it. We will try every corner of the beach before making the conclusion that the world we are living in is already a hopeless ruin. <laughs> what a pragmatic, rigorous, and rational speech. But dear, the world is a hopeless ruin. The conversation oh. ended in disagreement. I don't know why Arcanists hate the world so much. Perhaps the reason is they have never been truly accepted. To this day, I still remember her venomous conclusion. She got her sassiness from her mom. Yeah, yeah. As soon as she started talking, I was like, oh yeah, this is definitely Tori Seren's mom. <laughs> the world built on past experiences has ended. In your words, which you used to mock us, why not embrace the reality? <laughs> Yet about the gnosis which she deeply believed in and the so-called prophecies she made through numbers, she had never given any proofs or details that showed rigorous logic and the reason for her inactions was was an oath she had made before some stone therefore i believed her words were only the nonsense of a lunatic when we first met i thought she was different from all those psychos who mistook the malfunction of their prefrontal cortex as the will of god but they turned out to be the same Mistook the malfunction of their prefrontal cortex as the will of God. God damn! In the name of human sense, I swore everything she said was absurd and ridiculous to me. Until. Until? Hmm. Madame Z said the Arcanists on that island are all named after numbers because they have a strong belief that numbers are the essence of their souls. Damn, that's raw. I need that line for work now. Yeah, that was such a good line. <laughs> all she can say is no. <laughs> the investigator wouldn't write down her name. Is it because of the conflict between their beliefs? Matilda turned to the next page eagerly, as if checking a novel brought in class by some undisciplined student. But the reality welcomes her with an empty page. Huh? No! Imagine there's a person on the island named 69. It would be a legend. It would be a, it would be a god. That, that would be so funny if they had done that. Maybe because the story ends with an abrupt stop, or the hope just raised has, has dashed down. Matilda clenches her handkerchief with her sweaty palm. Submitting such an unfinished report would only cause problems for the reviewers and evaluators, but this investigator didn't even write down their name. Don't worry, Ms. Bonish. I'm familiar with this situation. Every time, after the brave Typhon defeats Jupiter, he returns to the Auto Island. But each time we twist the ear of Mr. Glassbox, Typhon will show up again and again. What are you talking about, Sotheby? <laughs> Ms. Moisson told me, the ear is the key to bringing back our hope. Wait, don't tell me you are talking about the shows on the mechanical television. Ignoring the monitor assistant's confusion, the enthusiastic young lady starts looking around for the ear that carries all her hope. Stop! Uh, stop, Miss Sotheby! Please, take a seat on the cushion and listen to me carefully. This is a detailed report written by a formal investigator of the foundations, not some TV show full of cliffhangers. That means we will definitely find the rest somewhere. Oh, I see! 
Must be a Coco Treant who took away the other part of the book. <laughs> Usually, they will be attracted by Luna Fixer, and by following their traces, will find their lairs in the stable. Ah, Sotheby. You mean someone took it away? Hmm, that's highly possible. Data loss is not allowed in the Foundation, especially under the Monitor Assistance Management. We must prepare Luna Fixer! Don't forget their favorite jigging magical beans! Hmm. I don't have those materials with me right now, but I can write to them. It only takes a month. I love this one. <laughs> the disconcerting conversation is clearly too much for this rigorous monitor assistant. Nuh-uh, we don't need that. After taking a deep breath, Matilda takes out her crystal orb. An ambitious smile spreads over her face. You perfectly accomplished the task from me when you found this valuable report. Well done, Assistant Sotheby. Now it's time for the great Matilda to show a little bit of her greatness. I hope all of Sotheby's delusions are completely correct in the end. Same. Ah, uh, she's so funny. Divination in the day. You will meet countless great diviners before the real answer is revealed. They're so adorable. Yeah. There is no moonlight during the daytime. But the moon is not the only choice for divination. Judging from the omen, it's at the northwest, the beginning and the ending of the ring, where the wall reflects repeatedly. Aha, that's very clear. Holding the crystal orb with both hands, Matilda keeps adjusting her position while trying to figure out the vague vision in the sphere. Sotheby follows her with a curious face. The northwest of SPDM. This one is straightforward. What happened in the first two stages of the story again? I kind of miss it. I mean, this is the like after story of what happened in the whole entirety of chapter five, which we already finished. Um, but basically, chapter five, they went to this island full of arcanist mathematicians. And they, they, they're pretty much act like Greek philosophers. You know, they have to have pointless conversations about the meaning of things. And they all believe in that everyone has a number as their essence, you know, soul numbers. So basically, Vertin and her team, uh, which are Regulus, Sonetto, uh, and Lilia, for this one. Am I missing someone? No, I think that was all of them, right? Regulus, Sonetto, and Lilia were the ones accompanying her. Uh, took a boat to that island because Vertin found like a weird, uh, a strange radio that gave her the coordinates of the island. And she, then they get to the island and they meet 37. And 37 is like, oh, it's the year 2007 here, you know, because they're not affected by the storm. So a lot of stuff happens on the island. Arcana is there, because of course. Yeah, there's Mr. Apple and Miss Radio also. A lot of happens, but the TLDR, it's like, they get in trouble because Sonetto tries to fight Arcana. Uh, but eventually 37 takes Vert into like the mystical number cave thingy, where we have the boss fight. And then when we walk out of there, uh, we see planes are coming and they start bombing the island. And there's also a big, a big boat. Because the humans are invading, because, because, sure, I guess, and that's how it ends. That's literally where it ends, with the boat approaching and the, and the planes bombarding. And, and, and then after, now here we jump to Sotheby and Matilda, which is basically Sotheby wants to find documents or anything on the island that could help Bertin. Uh, so that's what they're doing, basically. They're just looking around the library and they find this report. And now they're looking for the other half of the report. <laughs> because the report ends in a cliffhanger as well. 
chapter four to mention how tantalizing Arcana is. Oh yes, Arcana was very tantalizing as always. Very important information. The beginning and the ending of the ring is not a problem either. The icon of the computing center is exactly the Ouroboros, a serpent eating its own tail. Here we are. But where the wall reflects repeatedly, does that mean a closed room with mirrors? The mirror in the display center is a huge kinescope in the wall. And the one in the airtight laboratory is a crystal clear observation window. The one in the rehab center? No, no, no. The mirrors in the operation room have been replaced with curved electronic screens of steel structure after that Xeno pilot made a scene. So, where is the answer? She slowly turns around, trying to find the perfect angle for a clearer vision. A white figure stomps away from her side, almost bumping off the orb she tightly holds. Where did you come from, dork? Wasting my time. Damn! <laughs> the man groans a curse and hastily leaves this place with his hands covering his nose and mouth. What? How could he say that? That's rude! That's rude! That gentleman doesn't look well. He's covering his face. His nose is running with purple liquid. Oh dear. Did he drink a whole bottle of purple Crystallandra juice? He needs treatment immediately. Oh, if only I had brought the Phoenix heart nerves with me. He ran towards the rehab center. Hmm, nothing to worry about. Just another patient trying to prove he has recovered. The hasty man has disappeared completely. The little incident doesn't raise anyone's attention. The rehab center has all the facilities and medicines he needs. He will be properly treated. But why is he wearing the uniform of Laplace? Hmm, and where's the receptionist here? The lobby of the scientific computing center welcomes them with a deafening silence. The counter is no longer busy with people, but with an auto recognition device instead. Does everyone go to the weekend party night? Probing around the, the counter, the temporary investigator seems determined to take out a party ground phone from somewhere. Absolutely not. The researchers here are too busy to do that. Matilda Dork, real. We can call Matilda Dork, but not on that tone. Exactly, exactly. It's all in the tone. The computing center is working on the most urgent and vital project, the research on the immunity to the storm. We should not disturb them unless it's an emergency. Every time I hear Laplace, I get a chill down my spine. <laughs> the PTSD. So please stop calling the office and put down the telephone, Miss Sotheby. This is not the ear of a tea kettler, and it won't take you to any twist balls. The monitor assistant can't stand the difference in their terminology anymore. Je sais qu'il est débutant, mais quand même, il est trop bizarre. Guide new members with caution on patience. Trigger the reflectors at the right time. Oh, j'avoue que Vertin a remporté une victoire pas pour rien sur ça. Her mumbling is interrupted by the owner of the cheerful footsteps. Miss Burnish, I just read the map on the counter. You mentioned where the wall reflects repeatedly. Does the vision refer to the racket ball center here? You see, its icon is a bouncing ball. <gasps> <gasps> Let me take a look. Yeah, they didn't decide what kind of reflect. the right direction. Next, empty boxes, glasswares, and copper pieces. Hmm, looks 
that your destination has piles of metal. The vision in the orb is growing clearer, proving that they're heading in the right direction. That is Matilda's upset mind. Um, good job, Assistant Sotheby. I have to say, I might have gone a bit too hard on you. You are more capable than I thought. Thanks to your prompt reminder, we have saved quite some time. Sotheby is glad to help. She's so sweet. <laughs> The young lady gladly hops along the way, but she doesn't give up peering at Matilda's crystal orb. Miss Bunish, since you're such a talented diviner, why don't you just divine the reason for the storm with your inherited arcanum ability? <laughs> oh no, they are French. Now Matilda is French, Thoroughby is British. According to Miss Moisson, the reason still remains a mystery. If the crystal orb can reveal its truth, everything will be much easier for Vertin and her team. So they'll be asking the real questions, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they find the reason for the storm? The brave assumption astonishes this great diviner. She almost drops the orb. That's impossible for sure. It's a typical mistake of layman's to believe one can see everything through divination. You are an expert on potions and arcane creatures, but you have little knowledge on other subjects. Haven't you received any systematic education on arcanum? Education on arcanum? I'm of course well educated in arcanum, with Ms. Mosso as my tutor. And my arcane friends, such as Typhon from the Auto Island, <laughs> Jupiter, and... Up, 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 uh, all right, all right, enough! She shakes her head, stopping her from listing another name for an arcane creature that nobody has ever heard of. I have understood the fact that the education you have received is not uh, systematical, or say, incomplete, imperfect, inelegant. But don't worry, because you are talking to the kind-hearted Matilda. She will spend her valuable time to make it up for you. The great monitor assistant clears her throat and starts recalling what she learned when she was 12. In fact, the system of arcanum knowledge is not completely separated from that of human science. For example, the modern pharmacy and chemistry actually originated from the experiments of potions and alchemy in the ancient times. They developed into two different systems because arcanists focused more on the knowledge ignored by scientists, which is Gnosis. The knowledge we learn from divination is exactly under this category. Wow. <laughs> wow. So the beast's eyes light up with amazement. Matilda takes out her notebook and draws a brief sketch in it. In with more details. If two human researchers test Snell's law at two different places at the same time without making any mistakes, they will always reach the same conclusion. <laughs> time for some arcanum learning in between all this, <laughs> because sure, why not? <laughs> or if two potionists use the same ingredients and follow the same formula to make the cough cough stop stop potion separately, their products will also have similar effects. However, if two diviners respectively perform divination on the same thing, they will probably see totally different visions. Because what the divination shows is merely omens. The interpretation of these omens is in fact a kind of subjective deduction based on the reality, and there is no such thing as a standard answer. Even if the two diviners draw the same conclusion, it is more of a coincidence than a result that implies generalizability. So diviners never check the accuracy of their divination through the review of peers. And this is an example of Gnosis. Unlike human sense, it is unique and possesses no universality. Hmm. She puts it away and wiggles her index finger. In other words, 
Even if someone finds out the reason for the storm through divination, they can't have other diviners verify it. Because a hundred different diviners will give out a hundred different conclusions. The scene will be even busier than a concert at Music Verein. I do love divination of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. That being said, the more possible result we get from the divination is nothing. Divination cannot bring knowledge which the diviners have never learned. The divination of such world-class knowledge, as complicated as the reason for the storm, can only be performed by world-class diviners. We may find one or two diviners like that if time continues to be reversed, like Nostradamus. Hmm, but he lived in the 16th century. All right, let's just wait until we get there. Easy, easy peasy. Besides, even Nostradamus is not always right. But, but Miss Buaniche is! <laughs> oh, so the bee, you're so cute. Thanks to your divination, we're getting closer and closer to that report, right? <gasps> ah. You, 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 you are right! Finding items, interpreting dreams, and making simple prophecies. All these things are just a breeze for the bright and clever Matilda. But inquiring about the storm is beyond my ability, and it will only bring misfortune. Hm, I will never make such a stupid mistake. Matilda regains her radiant appearance. In fact, this half of the report and the handwriting of the author are perfect divination media. Matilda is French, yeah. Besides, our target is not far away from us, and I'm familiar with the surroundings. Which have made things much easier than usual. It is true diviners can improve the accuracy and controllability of their gnosis by practicing repeatedly, holding the rituals properly, and making targeted preparations. But that still doesn't mean the result will be absolutely accurate. Sorry, I'm <laughs> looking at my cat. She's bathing herself, but you know we we put a bandana around her neck, and sometimes it like doubles back over her face, and sometimes we just start like bathing, you know, like licking herself. She will lick the bandana, <laughs> and it's so funny to see. <laughs> yeah, she's being cute as crunkly. The national accents really make it really enjoying and funny. Yeah, yeah, that's why I play it also in English. It's the national accents are so good. Hey, fair morning. So let me nuts. No one can tell from her face whether she truly understands that announcement or not. Reading the vision in the orb, Matilda leads Sotheby around another corner nimbly. who mentioned the School of Numbers claimed she was enlightened about the year of the next storm. I did manage to meet the Eldritch Horror, yeah, we... It was a walk in the park now. We did it first try today. Does Matilda love Sonero? Is there a love triangle between Matilda, Sonero and Timekeeper? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the only, the only canon, the only clear thing is that Matilda has a very obvious crush on Sonero. The, the other is mostly shipping. Sonero does look, does look really interested in Bertin most of the time. Uh, but I mean, Bertin is Bertin, so... <laughs> will that ever get somewhere? Only time will tell. of mathematics but the numbers themselves because they are even more abstract than images and languages as kind of symbol even so there is no way for us to verify this prophet unless it really comes true
We do have a Schneider also, but it, I mean, Schneider. <laughs> Rip Schneider. <laughs> They'll all be roommates. <laughs> So yeah, the ships, the more popular ship you'll see, or the ones I've seen at least, it's either Vertin Sonero or Vertin with Schneider. Uh, and Matilda has this weird rivalry slash crash with Sonero, but it looks pretty one-sided so far. <laughs> I will never forgive the management dictate. Yeah, no, that that sucked. That is also why it takes almost nothing to spread a prophecy. My mother told me many people in the outside world write to the Foundation every day, claiming to be prophets who can predict the doomsday and thus requesting unemployment benefits. <laughs> <laughs> From event 1.2? Ooh. My first event was the one uh, with Shaman and, and the other lady, so... I'm not sure which one, which one was 1.2. The Tuesday? Unemployment benefits? Oh my! The outside world is far more wonderful than I thought! How fascinating! The Spoa niche is even greater than I expected! <laughs> <laughs> you bet! Oh yeah, feed, on, feed onto Matilda's ego. Well, well, One point two is this fair event. Ah. They have reached the end of the corridor. Matilda puts away the orb and looks at a wooden door with no sign in front of her. This is where the vision leads them to. The room next to the rack to the racket bowl center. Here we are, Miss Sotheby. Now, this is the moment to verify the result of my divination. She opens the door with a slight push. And... Oh, come on! <laughs> Why are you like this game? Ah, oh, it's giving something in between. Oh, Mr. Mr. Narrator? Will it be Mr. Narrator or Miss Narrator? If you look at the ground after the rain, you can often see a wet, long trail. Like this one. It is Miss Narrator. Rain within reach. At the end of the trail, there may be a snail slowly crawling forward. Yes. Forward. The snail marks the direction for us. But what if we don't see any snails at either end? How are we going to distinguish the direction to the future from that to the past? We a criterion? Criterion. Well said, darling. Thank you. To figure something out, you <laughs> always need to make deductions based on facts and logical reasoning. What you see is not necessarily true, but what is logical is, because we haven't witnessed or experienced anything illogical so far. If something like that actually happens, it must be because we are too ignorant to understand it for the moment. This point was firmly believed by those researchers who worked in the house like canned sardines. It remained true to them until the first drop of rain rose. The sardines suddenly found that the knowledge they possessed couldn't support the point anymore. The can was opened, revealing a completely different thinking pattern to them. <sighs> Whatever they used to mend the can, there was still a crevice left between the inside and the outside, and it could be ripped open again at any time. What happened then? The chaos didn't last. If it really was the rain that swept away the snail and messed up time, then we should look at the silver lining. Does it mean we will find out the truth of time once the secret of the rain is revealed? There has never been a shortcut like this one, since time is only an intangible concept. So then, observation stations were built all over the globe. 
The staff learned how to collect and keep the valuable samples efficiently, in no time. The little boxes they use to store the raindrops are still being upgraded even now. Yeah, here sardines me hungry. <laughs> oh, you changed your name, let's go! I, I, I am freezing a sardine actually for regulator. <laughs> Order and silence were brought back to the labs. Every piece of gear was placed back on the right track. It was a grand feat, and no one could have accomplished it inside this huge, cumbersome machine, except another machine. She took no sides and sought only predictable results. Who is this machine they're talking about? That's why she made a decision as soon as she read that report and its attachment on her desk. The former was about a delicate component which flapped like a butterfly in that huge machine. And the latter was a piece of paper full of circles and dots. Then she stored the information on her hard disk and destroyed the report. They're talking about him for her. <laughs> uh, maybe now was the way wrong game. That machine is me. What if the machine is God? I mean, I mean. And the paper which claimed to have recorded the locations where the storm might happen, yes, the one with the butterfly like drawings, was retained for data comparison. Hmm. It seems she's satisfied with the result. Oh, are we gonna meet this machine? Damn, you speak French? Yeah, I do. My French is very poor though, but I can defend myself. Five. The lament in silence. The, that invisible hand, raised up high, is it a plucks a star from the sky. We oui. give me food attempt to rub someone with French language. <laughs> but if they if they don't understand you, how will they know what you want? The light is dim here. Archive cabinets and unorganized files are everywhere, punctuated by strange devices in Laplace style. It seems like an abandoned utility room. <coughs> Where are we? <laughs> Lost and found of the racquetball center. Can you say omelette de fromage? Yeah. It's actually wrong. <laughs> Should be omelette au fromage. She waves away the dust and struggles her way along the toppling cabinets. Hmm. The orb showed copper pieces. We need to find something that seems to be locked but he's actually not. Childhood drawing. Yeah, I know the same past. The, the same happened to me when I when I learned that. <laughs> Found it. Nothing can stop the genius, Matilda. If I don't understand me, they will give me money. And my defense to the police is I beg for food. I see. <laughs> Flawless logic. Yeah, it was just made famous from Dexter, but uh... <laughs> She finds what she's looking for in a rusty drawer. Obviously, the report has been here for a very long time. Low, low priority? Its corners score before because of the damp air. Luckily, the writing is still recognizable. The trip to Egypt didn't go smoothly. Why did they file this as low priority? The ship was hit by a common storm at sea. We were lost in the fog after that. Completely off course. Then something emerged from the water. Since the first storm, 
The Foundation has received frequent sightings of arcane creatures which should have been extinct in history. I had no idea what I was shooting at, even after I emptied the clip. And I didn't know what to do. So the arcanists brought us back on course. She names the precise longitude and latitude of our location. Even without using the sextant in the spare cabin. I wonder how she did that. Perhaps the world did look different in her eyes. Then when I was about to step on a random plank on the ship, she suddenly dragged me back. I thought it was only an inappropriate joke. But the next second, the plank broke. I was stunned and asked her how she saw that coming. She just answered me as if we were talking about the weather. Because that plank is deformed like a rhombus. I was confused. Where is the rhombus? She laughed. Of course. The rhombus can't be seen with eyes. You shall close your eyes, hearken to the teaching of the supreme existence, and seize the moment of aflatus. Of course. It's that easy. Of course, I didn't see anything. Nor did I understand what the moment of aflatus was. Perhaps it's just another privilege enjoyed by arcanists. Just like their right to be lunatic. Nevertheless, she reached the correct conclusion in a completely wrong way. Is it really possible? Anyway, she saved my life. But that was not enough to settle the differences between us. She remained rejective to working with the Foundation. And I finally gave up on the attempt to persuade them. My mission on that trip was not to make contact with them. Besides, what we needed was builders of the storm observation system. Not some liars who would only make things worse. As for the shelter they took from the storm, she wouldn't say a word as if she were dealing with a spy who pried to find out the deepest secrets of the Arcanists. In the end, Hugh mediated between us. He gave me an address in Istanbul to which I could send the letters to contact them. Huh. After that, I spent more than half a year in the Egypt office. Things were even worse there than I expected. Some have gone missing after the storm. The people who were supposed to be in the Egypt office, according to the member list stored in the headquarters in 1985, were not there when I arrived. The situation could be caused by the limitations of the transmission of paper-based materials, uh, because the computer was not yet popularized to every corner of the globe at the time. One minor mistake of a copyist could develop into a huge difference. Besides that, the chaos inside Laplace was an even worse issue. I learned that someone published the paper Samplings of Global and Regional Chaotic Energy Root Changes in the name of Butterfly of Lorenz. Huh. Apparently they secretly used our sampling sites, yet their research direction and conclusion were radically different from Laplace's. The researchers equally divided into two schools, one sticking to the human technology they have focused on, and one changing their direction to Arcanum. At the time, it was still too early to decide which direction was right, without sufficient experimental data. But many already believed that if time continued to be reversed, human technology would only keep falling into decline, while Arcanum, which relies on personal ability, would rise again. It's true that Gnosis cannot be copied, verified by an independent third party, or comprehended through reasoning. Its nature decides that it cannot lay the foundation of science or be popularized to every ordinary person. It takes solid marble to build a castle, not slippery sand. Even so, what harm will it do to rely on Arcanum, when the underlying logic of all things has become unreasonable? Uh huh. Before the disagreement was settled, the storm in 1987 was predicted. We were ordered to return to the headquarters 24 hours before its arrival. But the prediction was not accomplished by Laplace. A captive from Manus Vindicte names the precise date of that storm. Oh! Our enemies, those lunatic xenophobes, valuing only pure blood, made it further than we did. Yes. We built observation stations, we made countless deductions, we developed multiple simulation models. We made efforts, we sacrificed life, we did whatever we could. 
Yet the result was that they didn't find any other regions immune to the storm, except the headquarters and another one in North America. In the end, 95% of the branch members were reversed. 87.9% of the equipment was destroyed, and 100% of our predictions failed. Damn. In conclusion, our endeavor brought no achievements. As for the captive from Manus Vindicte, the delirium patient who claims that oracles flowed under his parietal bone, then we asked him how he learns the precise date of the storm. He burst into laughter. <laughs> Can't you hear it? Has God left you behind when he spread his grace? Ah, of course. Then he smashed his own skull with a handcuff. Ah, okay. Yes, there was no doubt. He was an incurable lunatic. But his insane nonsense was exactly the reason we survived the storm again. No matter how unreasonable or illogical it was, or how much a lie it sounded like. Sane is their kind of follower. <laughs> So we better believe we shouldn't go out in black today because the fish is swimming in the water. We would better believe in the existence of the non-physical, everlasting, transcendent world where everyone's soul is a number. We would better believe in the supreme existence which caused the disorder of time by merely casting its shadow. That means the life of individuals means nothing more than rubbish and the world is but an imperfect ruin for only the chosen ones will pass the trial but the rest will be eliminated by the rain. How am I supposed to do that? Finally, I made up my mind to write to her. I didn't expect her to answer my questions. All I wanted was to confirm if she had survived that storm. For the sake of our peaceful talk about the rhombus. Yet what I heard from them was a simple announcement of her death. With only two words. She died. She died. Then it burned and turned to ashes in a second. On the same day, the first and only timekeeper who just took office, the twelve year old child, returned alone from the storm. Oh. She told us the time in the outside world at that point. And that was how I knew she was right. It is right in front of you. What? If there is a god, why are you playing such a prank on us? After we had suffered from the collapse of all the existing orders and the failure of all the great laws. If this is what she calls the glimpse of the supreme existence, the moment of aflatus, do you have to present it in such a cruel way? The last two digits in the number of the year after that storm were exactly her name and her number. Seventy-seven. I love how they made the sound of like just clicking to like typewriter keys. The report ends here. Two digits. That's the full stop of the story. Incroyable! Incroyable! C'est vrai! Quelqu'un a vraiment fait cette prophétie! Who had this fucking game? Wait, is there something about 77? 77 is a pretty hot number. <laughs> what am I using? Oh no, uh, Reverse has a PC client. I'm just going to the official website and it should be there. Bertin and Sonetu will be thrilled to know what we found! Well done, Miss Sotheby! You performed as well as a formal investigator! We need to submit this report to your instructor immediately! Oh, 
won't work. Grabbing the papers tightly, Matilda turns around with excitement. So the bee isn't the person standing there. What are you doing in other people's homes? Whomst? Whomst the, the fuck? The report is not in a way. This is my personal item. You have no rights to take it. Please leave immediately. A personal item? This is a precious record that should have been submitted to the Foundation. According to Administration and Regulations for Dispatch Personnel, St. Pablo Foundation Decree Number 259, every member of the Foundation, when acting as a field investigator, is required to create a comprehensive investigation report of all their actions and promptly submit it. And they are obliged to ensure the authenticity, objectivity, and impartiality of the report. No personal bias is allowed in the content. If you have read this report, miss, you should know that it's not even qualified to be filed. Damn! <sighs> but this is an emergency! The Storm Reformation Act is still new to her. She can't think of any articles to support her point of view. She racks her brains for words. But before she makes it, the other person starts talking, with one of his eyebrows raised. I can tell from your uniform, you are a student of SPDM, or... This is Laplace. Do you have your guardian's approval to leave the school, Miss Underage Student? Damn! Uh, approval? I don't need that. I am not a student. You are talking to the exceptionally promoted monitor assistant of SPDM. Here is my ID. You're still underage, though. She holds her ID card high as if she's holding the flag of liberty. But she is ignored. The adult walks directly to a swivel chair in the room and pays attention to an educational toy on the table. <gasps> Did you just ignore a formal administrator of the foundation? This monitor assistant will report every misbehavior of yours. Every little bit of them. <sighs> Wordless, the monitor assistant can't be more embarrassed in her life. She looks around just to find that Solaby is gone. Luckily, the chief assistant learns faster than she expects. The familiar sing song tone is making a report to her own tutor outside the half open door. Miss Wassel, we found that report here. The great Miss Buenish and I discovered some important information. I came to you and Madame Z immediately after we read it. Ah ha ha! Is my cat voice acting unbelievable? Is your cat French? <laughs> hmm? Miss Bouvenish, why are you confronting Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair. <laughs> Sorevi stands at the door. Her head is tilted. Two adults are behind her. I didn't expect to see the second half of that report here in your room, Adler. <laughs> she brought two adults to fight one. This time, the owner of the voice can't be ignored. The swivel chair unwillingly turns around. Don't call me that, friend. Why not just call me Enigma? Just like everyone else. Relax. I know nicknames mean no harm, but I don't understand. How is a report filled with meaningless words of any concern to you, Madam Z? It provides information about the Arcanist group Virgin is now dealing with. If possible, please give it to me. Of course. How can I turn down a request from Constantine's chief of staff? <laughs> Easy! Take it away. I hope you don't mind the mold on it. The researcher stays seated on the chair and casually, casually hands out the report. Madame C smiles. She seems glad to see that Enigma still has the energy to be sarcastic. But clearly, the monitor assistant can't tolerate such a blatant viol violation of the staff regulations. Please pay attention to your manners and do not bring disgrace to the computing center. 
Mr. Rood. Damn! Miss Mossan taps her on the shoulder and quickly looks in the direction of the door. Miss Buanish? Miss Sotheby? You've done a great job. I'm sure what you have found would be of great help to Timekeeper. Matilda going in for the kill. <laughs> the mold on it. Listen, my every sandwich looks about that. No, please do not eat mold. Remember, guys, do not eat mold. And I will report your active performance in this mission to SPDM as soon as possible, Miss Boanish. We need to further analyze the files you've found. The first on the scene could provide more detailed information. Let's get out of here. Contribution exceptionnelle! <laughs> She's blushing. <laughs> I keep forgetting my son exists till I see her. Yeah, same. It built up in humidity. <laughs> The keyword give this young monitor assistant a giddy pleasure. She can't help but ignore everything else Miss Mosan says. Oh la la, exceptional! No, no! Calma, Matilda. <gasps> oh la la! She really said oh la la. <laughs> I, I didn't accomplish it alone. Assistant Sotheby also played a significant role. Hooray! <gasps> A loud cheer throws Matilda's mumbling. That is to say, Miss Burnish, we can start preparing the balloons and flowers for the twist ball. <laughs> she said the French thing. <clears throat> Speaking of which, this monitor assistant still needs to think about it. Uh, by the way, just call me Matilda. She struggles to get out of sight of his passionate hug. The great joy, the great joy brought by Miss Mosan makes her actions clumsy. Cheering and discussing, the girls leave the room. Madame C carefully puts the valuable report away. The researcher swivels the chair again and hides himself in the fortress made of dusty items. He talks through cabinet and equipment in a slow manner. There will be no advance in human technology. You think so? Even the Madame Z has given up on the study of theoretical physics and become a politician. Miss Bossom. <laughs> no, I've never thought of that. She turns to the door with a faint smile. The door is closed. Why did we get Enigma introduced here? I'm guessing he's gonna be important at some point. New direction. A new stem a new steam whistle sounds. By all means, board the ship. I know, right? What an enigma. But um, the dramas have ended. All is profoundly hushed in this cold and dark room. The researcher sighs and starts selling the messy papers and dusty tools on the table. Why is it mistaken for a utility room? Is it because of the mess? Metallic footsteps come from outside the door. I am astonished by the fact that you are interacting with others. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! Hey, yo! Hey, yo! <laughs> oh, sorry, I hit the microphone. Hey, yo! <laughs> Um, my lady? Hey, yo! The fact she's wearing the coat over shoulders. 
just just gives her the extreme extreme look, you know? Hey yo Damn <laughs> Let me get some machinery lubricant I am not looking respectfully in the slightest <laughs> When did we start playing Atomic Heart? <laughs> Dang, that's my kink! <laughs> that's my kink right there! <laughs> the game knows. But yeah, I was gonna say, it's like, it looks so much like the robot from Atomic Heart, but also it's just the, the I don't know, the coat over shoulders. The coat over shoulders, is, 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 it's like the cherry on top. God damn. God damn. <laughs> it's a nice code too. Leader in line with four. The brush nickel gold color scheme. I love her. Yeah. And yeah, the key is placed very deliberately. Deliver, yeah. That is attention to design. Oh, and the way you can see, I love how you can see the the the, the machinery, the thingies on like on the joints. Mm, that's so good. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm having a moment. Yeah, she absolutely doesn't need that coat, but I love that she carries it. Oh, I love the oh, I love the detail on the shoulder. I just oh god. Yeah, look 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 how it moves when Ah oh, oh that's so good. That's so good. Oh bell joints. Oh I love machinery. This was made for me! I remember I can, I can, I can remove the text. Let me take a screenshot. I send it to my friends. Mm -mm -mm. We love hard road ladies. <laughs> Whoever molded the cyber frame knew what they were doing. Uh huh, uh huh. They knew. <laughs> Damn! Oh, she looks so cool. Oh, she looks so hot. The no, the 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 only the the, the no facial facial expression, just only it also adds like a nice touch to it. You know, just the thingy for the eyes. Also, why she has so many, how many, so, so many pointy needles, like on over on the ears and like on the elbows. From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspire to the purity of the blessed machine. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, this is great. <laughs> How many of the cold mechanicals in chat? Oh, I love this. Who are you, fair lady? Another trespasser. They broke in. 
The robot in charge of the Laplace Scientific Computing Center shrugs and refuses to make any comments. She has already heard all the information she needs in the corridor. If it was a complaint that you were making, you know it is within your rights to submit an interdepartmental complaint within seven days after the incident. <laughs> uh. So is she the one they're referring to that put like everything in order? Don't bother. That file means nothing to me. I didn't file it because it is a report against the rules. Why bother to submit such a log full of personal feelings and emotional behaviors to our great, rigorous foundation? I love the monotone voice, me too. Is that so? I am gratified to find that you still have some sense. I too am gratified that you still have no idea that I was being sarcastic. Is she single though? Excellent question. Oh, that was sarcasm. The movement. <sighs> Never mind. What do you want from me, Madam Lucy? Madam Lucy? She can move, I'm in! <laughs> he asks as he bends down and organizes the papers scattered all over the place. This is the best effort he cares to make to receive a guest. You went all the way to this dusty rundown place so hurriedly that you even forgot to put on that pathetic mask. This is not because of some old files, I assume. The faceless robot inclines its head in agreement. Certainly. Oh, the sound! Oh, that was great. My alone sharing must be requested officially through me. <laughs> mommy, I mean, mommy, I mean. I hope you can be the cryptographer of the Manus Vindictae's ritual. You are still the best. You are asking me, a human, to decode the ritual of a pure-blood arcanist group? I don't see how I'll be helpful to this project. You cannot evaluate your own level of being of value, Adler. Oh, the way she crosses her arms and taps her fingers over her, over her arm. The researcher keeps unfolding more dusty folders without raising his eyes from the table. Well, you evaluate our value. Test us in experiments you set. Prove the hypotheses by exhaustion. Make mistakes and start all over again. You repeat the process like a roaring locomotive that pulls the research center out of this chaotic disaster. <laughs> they kid you go so much. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. I love her glass-like spectacle score behind her hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. You question not what is ahead of you, nor whether the path you've taken will be regular or easy. The only idea you planted into your little brain is to move forward, to improve. Thank you for your compliment. Credit goes to everyone. <laughs> that was not even a... Miss Mirgara. Thank you for the compliment. Guess you agree. A life without creativity is not worth living. And that's the life that I wake up to every day. I'm no longer the person you thought you came here for. I'm pretty sure he spoke in another language. That was not even a... Miss <sighs> Mirgara. What language is that? Does anyone recognize it? Lord have mercy, this is what technology has been delivered during the testing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was not even a... <sighs> Miss Mirgara. That was not even a... Miss Mirgara. 
No, that's definitely not Portuguese. That was not even a... It's me, Agara. Yeah, it sounds like German or some other kind of... I, I forgot what they, what they call those languages. I'll never be able to combine human technology and Arcanum. And I'll never comprehend even the slightest part of it. Germanic. Yeah, Germanic. I think that's, I think that's the word. Slavic? Or maybe, yeah. I don't, I, I, I honestly, I don't know at this point what word I was going from. One of those European languages that are, you know, that are like similar to German. I mean, not similar, but like sounding to us English alphabet knowers. I am useless to you. He squares up the paper on the desk in a grumpy manner, making a huge knocking noise. I don't expect someone made of tin to understand a human mind, but I beg of you, leave me alone. Yeah, Eastern Europe. The robot ignores his emotional speech and keeps talking. The work of analyzing the masks of Manus Vindicte did not go well. A side effect occurs in the researchers and it is getting worse. The isolation wards on the basement level are overwhelmed. What a scene. Have you aborted the experiment? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> also, that's probably why there was a guy running with like his nose bleeding purple. We have conducted the Arcanum imaging experiment on the masks and found a component which also exists in the raindrops of the storm. But knowing what it is composed of does not help explain how it works. What we're looking for is the original ritual that the man has cast on them. <laughs> you are trying to figure out one's career planning from one's physical examination report. I wonder why it is not working. <laughs> what are you talking about? The road lady is distracting. Uh, the road lady wants his help to figure out what kind of ritual they do on the masks to make them immune to the storm. Even if somehow you manage to find the original ritual, you still need a proper environment to test it, which is the outside world with a coming storm. The researcher turns to her. Wisdom and sarcasm glow in his eyes. That's why we can't tell if we're getting results. Even if we had the right ritual, proper permission from the Foundation to travel, and strong-minded volunteer subjects. Experiments performed in the Ivory Tower won't succeed because... An experiment about the storm can only be done in a storm. Glad to see your brain is not rusty yet. It only took you three sentences to draw the conclusion which took the seminar a week to reach. Damn! That proves you are capable of the project. The robot in charge puts a document on the table. The history maintenance team has forecast different critical points of this storm. Foundation investigators are on their way. Oh, there's Marcus! Greta Hoffman. Dispatch to Vienna? If Manus Vindicte still plans to accelerate the storm, like what they have done in 1929, there will be a high possibility that their people will show up at the transformation point of history and society, also known as the critical point of time, the center of the storm. Yeah, it says to Vienna, unless this was sent to someone to approve.
Your sister, Greta Hoffman, is also one of the investigators. <laughs> I have no interest in any Hoffmans other than myself. We have different perspectives. It is okay. I am just here to inform you that if any of the investigators successfully send the information of the ritual back, the research about the immunity of the storm will be conducted immediately. Take your time and be mentally prepared. But once the storm alert is issued, we only have 24 hours to verify the feasibility of the ritual. I wish you will be fully prepared by then. The robot gets out of the room, leaving him no right to choose. Her feet crashing to the floor, making a steely sound. Enigma's eyes flicker toward the document. The face on the top is familiar to him. He pulls out the drawer and takes out a scrap of paper. This is the last code he didn't give anyone. Grisa looks bad though. He has an interesting hairstyle. Why did her feet crash on me instead of the ground? I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you are echoing everyone's sentiment. What does it say? The thing is for... The age of humans has come to an end. Greta Hoffman. Oh. Hey, wait. There's some Morse code down the back here. Someone... Someone translate that, what does it say? Is it a rake roll? <laughs> I need someone to get on this. I'm gonna save this. See if it actually means something. That is IRG bait if I've ever seen one. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's right there. Just, <laughs> mommy robot, sorry, mommy robot, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it has to mean something. It's either that or, you know, it's like a, a meme. How in that one game? I, don't, I can't remember if it was reverse. Or something else that there was like a warning sign that like had the three first the three first lines were like oh like unauthorized entry blah 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 blah, blah and then it went it it turned into a recrawl. <laughs> I can't remember which game that was, but it was amazing. This is the last code he didn't give anyone. One thing is for sure now. Oh, okay. Oh, that's her voice. Mm. It says uh, Lucy's si Lucy single. <laughs> the age of humans has come to an end. I welcome the age of robots. The end. What do you mean the end? I, I welcome the age of robots. If they all look like Lucy, to be honest. Okay, but that was it? Also, I've been, I've been farming so much that I'm level 62 on this thing, so I bought the... <laughs> I bought the battle pass to get all the rewards. Listen, if the edge of robot is to bring forth those kind of looks, um, you know, yeah, exactly. I, 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 I get it. I get it. What am I missing? Oh, okay. To clear this. Hmm. 
What did I get? The dungeon. Let's just put that one, even though I'm, I'm not completed, but it's fine. Actually, let's see if we can get the... The Morse, the Morse code... The Morse code says the world is a big mystery. Wait, for real? Or are you, you, are you making it up? Or did you actually look it up? This is eternity. She's pretty, I'm not gonna lie. She is pretty. I entered a Morse code decoder. I can't read Morse code. Okay, yeah, yeah that's what I was gonna do, but so you saved me time. Thank you. You wanna go for eternity? I don't know, I'm saving for Tooth Fairy. Uh, but I'm like, I don't know, she's pretty. She is pretty. She's she's no Lucy, I mean, yeah, but we take what we can. There's no Lucy pliable, as far as I know. The only robot we have is a Sputnik. And the alien, I guess, and the radio. Only we count the TV lady. With fairy tennis skin. Oh, yeah, that's coming too, right? Ah, uh, man. Now, what? <laughs> Have you seen Poltergeist inside two skin? No. Two fairies are very good crit support as well. Ooh. Now you farm. Uh, well, Polter's Guide, let's see. Uh, Can well, I... Can I oh. Interesting. So she has a face. Finally made up your mind to share some secrets. The same, she just has different TVs. Different color TVs. And she has a... Oh no, she has a slightly different... Slightly different clothes. Hello! Chile Manion? Oh, that's cute! What does she do? Immune to blind, corrode, and poison. The each round gains one stack of blood of longevity. Deals 3% increased damage, and damage recovery increases by 3%. Damage dealt, want to cast her, blah, 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 transport, reactivity effect, damage dealt plus 5, and damage shield plus 5. Blood of immortality, damage bonus plus 25%, damage shield plus 25%, immune to stats down, cannot be dispelled. Wait, is she really immune to everything? Anyone compare with two fairies, especially me? <laughs> That's the spirit.
Very good DPS, but she damages herself. Her ult heals herself. Ah. Mass attack deals 200% reality damage to all enemies. The second use lead trade plus 50%. When target attack, the caster surfers score an HP minus 10% and deals 200% reality damage. Inflict one round of nasty wound on the target. Nasty wound healing taken minus 50. That's a debuff and attack. Mass attack. HP blah blah blah. Current HP plus 10% and deals 160% reality damage to two enemies. How interesting. Sounds interesting. This guy is actually good. I'm just I'm not into the Greek designs. When you take a nap, always keep your ears to the ground and the leaves. And I don't find them that interesting. Looks like drums, and the pheasant like flutes. But yeah, I'm like them. I'm done. She has plus 25% healing crystals, so maybe that kind of set it. Yeah, it seems like she's really a thing of like, you know, you spam attacks and then you get her all, she heals and then you make damage. I pulled for Thursday because of the, her sassiness. Valid. I just, I didn't like her face. Yeah, I'm very, I'm, I go very much by, by looks plus personality when I pull for characters. So like everyone there tell me everyone tells me like oh six six broken and whatnot and blah blah I'm like okay well like I don't care about him <laughs> I'm not that kind of meta player. I barely focus on meta until I need to. And even then it's just like okay, how can I give the best build to the characters I like? To the characters I want. <laughs> I care about Sila so much in Starrell that I pulled for Hanabi for Sila. Valid. I have two six stars that I don't level up because I'm not a fan of their design. Yeah, I mean that that was the reason I was not using Balloon Party at first. Like, you know, her design was whatever and she was kind of a weirdo, she scared me, so I wasn't using her. But I mean I, I really needed a healer. And now through necessity I kinda I kind of got a got a liking to her, but I mean, you know, if I get Tooth Fairy, she she will probably get replaced by Tooth Fairy once I have Tooth Fairy built up. You look for broken emotionally characters. <laughs> like here from the ones I have, like Regulus, of course, my baby. Oh, whoa, whoa. Watch out, mate. She's already inside three. Resonance 8. Uh, Lilia. Don't be in and out. Love the You're pilot thing. Me. Shaman, I really like. I, I, I think I really like his. Uh, well, well. I heard your footsteps when you rounded the. I really like the art. Like, he looks so cool with, like, the skull on his head and, like, the. Uh, Yellow eyes on the with the on the black with the black cornea the the robot arm, um, and then I did his story and he's actually pretty chill. He's pretty cool. So I'm like, okay, you know what? We're pulling for this man. Like, like, look! Look at his face. Look at—he has a fang. Also, like he's so cool. Then Sonero, of course, baby. She's so pretty. And um, I'm not good at dealing with visitors. It reminds me of something bad. I also like Bicorn. She looks cute. And uh, so she's like a great great uh, debuffer so I'm like okay you know what I wouldn't I wouldn't mind like I'm okay with raising her she she's useful and she looks great perfect Bikram Bloom is the wife 
I love her eyes. Yeah, no, she's so pretty. And the art is so pretty, too. And, you know, she had that weird creature there. Oh, that skin's pretty. pretty. She's so pretty! She's just so pretty! Just look at her. <laughs> That's me, I'm the weird creature in there. Understandable. Uh, well, well, as I said, Balloon Party was mostly for necessity. Oh, nice but her art, nice her inside, her inside two art is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty good. The two, the two, the two, the double color hair just really gives her a something. But she's like cool on the creepy side, you know. But like, it's very, it's very well pulled out, in my opinion. I'm the book that she's reading? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I like DK. Speak. Uh, 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 uh. Reggie. Maroon Part is a great design. Creepy would kind of cute. I want to pat her head and read her stories. Yeah, she, I read her story and I'm like, I'm like, mm, I see, a traumatized child. I see now why she's so creepy. She's slightly bad though, yeah, but uh, I think she's not, she's not as useful. But like, look at her, like, goddamn. So when as I start, I look up on Dick and now on DK and now I still look up to her. Valid. She got a panther, yeah, like some white cat there, and like that sword and that weird mysterious hand. I just remember she was F tire. Yeah, like I'll probably race her now that I have more free time. But now I was just really racing the, the characters that I use. Uh, I like Charlie too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is also a thing of like I just got her and I tried her and I'm like okay she's actually she's actually fun. And I like her double personalities she has going on. Oh, this is a cute skin. I like the skin more. The, I mean the art at least. He's a battle pass skin. You can go to sport coding in the CN server. Oh yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Uh, who else? I mean, this two I erased them a little because the story, the game asked me to. There's Matilda. I want to erase Matilda because, no, come on, uh, it's Matilda. It's Matilda. How could I not raise Matilda? With our sassy French girl. Tenant also has Good a look. Day, my lord. You're too kind visiting me, and I regret to receive you in a room of nothing. Also, look at that art. That voice. <laughs> I want Tenant to manhandle me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> can you put on the voice again? I on my niece begging. I can put all her voice lines for you guys. She's twenty. She's twenty five years old. Who's British? Greetings to you, fair lady. May I present you a rose? Ah, 
seems like you won't fall for this cheap flattery. I'm ashamed. <laughs> Sunlight eases people's mind and endows diamonds with glowing luxury. What a perfect occasion for deceiving. Yeah, no, she is like. Mm. <laughs> so, what's next? The young lady of the rich, resolute, and courageous as she is disregards my humble beginnings and takes her possessions to elope with me. But then I will leave her and disappear forever. Oh no, I'd fall for cheap flattery. <laughs> Looking at them and thinking, why did God make me a guy? It's unfair. <laughs> the only woman that can raise beside Bertin. <laughs> a cigar would make a nifty accessory. And those gracious ladies would certainly love to see their lover to be a sight for the eyes. But no thank you. I prefer my teeth unstained. Oh, she's great. Good day, my lord. You're too kind visiting me, and I regret to receive you in a room of nothing. Another beautiful morning arrives, and many beautiful things are about to come. I see people opening their arms, waiting to go to the ball. New clothes, new flatteries, and new glittering stars to come to them. Would I have the honor to invite you for dinner? There's a banquet held by someone I don't know. Huh? A freeloader? No, no, no. I'd say it would be lavish of us if we don't enjoy it. Ah, oh, she's great. Why is she so bad? Good morning, my lady. I've prepared you fresh coffee, sandwiches, and this shiny diamond. Of course, I would never lie to you. This is a piece of cultured work, but look how it sparkles. How elegant, isn't it? <laughs> we must stay focused, brothers. <laughs> Focus on what? <laughs> what was this game again? It is reverse 1999. Ruby Port. A beauty from Duro Valley. Mmm. Tastes as sweet as it smells. Believe me, it'll make your evening unforgettable. <laughs> She <laughs> A decent gentleman will not let go of this. But be careful. Don't let it tilt to your eyes. Eye contact <laughs> is vital. Although I'm not a woman of guns, it's necessary to carry one. I'm sure you know the reason why. I don't dislike dresses. They are pretty, delicately embroidered and intricately sewed apparels. They are what I'm supposed to wear, not these trousers. <laughs> Destiny holds a different plan, doesn't it? Diddling, rightly considered, is a compound of which the ingredients are minuteness, interest, perseverance, ingenuity, audacity, nonchalance. Originality, impertinence, and grin. It's good that it's 24 C outside because I can use that as an excuse as to why I'm all flustered. I may need blood pressure meds after this one, brothers. <laughs> if my eyes serve me well, it's the Bay of Light this respectable young lady is wearing. Oh, don't worry, I won't do anything. She's of a background too prominent and an age too young for my tricks. New Delhi. To be honest, I barely remember anything about it. It doesn't make much difference to England. Aside from the scorching sun. A crime group. Hm. Just to my likings. I don't like to resort to violence, but 
accidents happen. <laughs> Glad to be of service, my lady. Intriguing, isn't it? A design of its own kind. Time to wake up, gentlemen. Just as I willed it. Bravo! Sadly, these are counterfeits. Just like real diamonds. Fragrance and dazzle can easily confuse one's vision. I'm sorry for you. Watch my clothes. I see this thing when she gets that much. Damn it. Now, to divide the spoils, or should I say, a reasonable reallocation of the profits? That's all, that's, those are all the voice lines I have. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we, are, we are definitely raising her. Very upset you have you have not raised this lady. As I said, I had I had to focus on like my faves that I will be useful. But um, she now she she gets to be on the list of people that I need to raise. <laughs> Read her kit. Shield the buff DPS. Interesting. Beautiful lie. After the caster enters battle, immediately cast one star a bouquet of galaxy and gains one stack of diamond bullet. Only triggers one time. Uh -uh, if the caster starts around with HP below 50%, immediately cast one star a bouquet of galaxy. Diamond bullet is, after attacking, reduces target's reality defense by 30%. Oh. What's her ultimate? A sincere heart. Her heart is sincere, it's just split into many pieces. Don't blame her. When target attack deals 50 f 550 reality damage, percent reality damage, and then gains two attacks with diamond bullet. So she just makes her, the enemies weaker to her as she attacks. A shiny diamond is glamorous. When target attack deals 200% reality damage. It used to be sand or charcoal. 300% reality damage. It's just a lie known to everyone. 500% reality damage. And what's the buff? A bouquet of galaxy. Oh, this is the one that she triggers. That she can trigger automa automatically. People have always dreamed of such things. Mass buff gives all allies a shield. With the caster attack times 80% HP for one round. Now she's taking minus 20% while the shield is active. And then for two stars, people have always dreamed of such thing, but they can only gaze at it from the ground. Same shield, but now it's the caster attack times 120%. And then times 200%. People have always dreamed of such thing, no matter if it's in the distant universe or right in front of them. Hmm. Great for reality, Tim, yes. Yeah, like I'm weak to Riz. <laughs> to her Riz. Yeah, exactly. She just Riz the enemies and makes them weak. She's good, yeah. She sounds good. Necrologist also looks cute. Hello. Welcome to the Tombstone Museum. My apologies. I'm losing it a little from all that I've had to do. She's also quite pretty. I do like Mesmer as oh, well. It's our genius. Any insane new ideas? But she has a nasty personality. This guy is interesting looking. Come in. It's fine. Just be careful not to be eaten by them. I love his accent though. I love his vibe. The fangs just give me something. Pavius Mir? She's it's cute as well. Your back safely. Oh! 
Oh, cute. Has little ears. And her axe has blood. I love his dog. Yeah. Yeah, the others are characters that I'm just like, oh, you know, they look funny. They look fun. John Titor. I mean, it's, it's John Titor. Four, eight, six, nine. But they don't have, like, cool arts. You're here. Hey, maybe you can help me with... Since they're not, like, high stars. What clicks art? Possible. I knock on the door. Um, my man, I don't think you should be taking a picture of that. <laughs> I love the, the expression of the little creature on his side. <laughs> no, no, let him cook. I mean, she's clearly a ghost, but I'm just like, is he taking this picture because he's a ghost? Or is this, or is this how he became a ghost? Real questions. <laughs> taking a picture of a bomb will delete the bomb. Oh yeah, he has that thing. Yeah, yeah, right, that's his ability. But still, the art was so funny. Well, then there's Are you Mr. Apple. To confirm this Apple's expiration date? Oh, the art is so cute, actually. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this is great. Nia, hello, hello, Neko Heiko. David Bowie. <laughs> oh, that was super good. Thank you. How do you go from this to this? Okay, but I kind of need it though. <laughs> that a blast more wrist than me. <laughs> Which skins are available right now? Oh, Centurion is the... Centurion will be also, I think well, she will be on Tooth Fairy's banner, no? Anyway, I should really be going back to here. It's not like I'm doing any more gaming related stuff. I was just looking around at <laughs> what, everything. Our Centurion is very good. Huh. I love that Mr. Apple can be such a likable character despite being an apple. Real. <laughs> He's so fun. I love him. I love Mr. Apple. But I go night night though. Good night. Have a good night. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna end soon anyway. I'm just sitting here thinking of what to say. That was that was. That truly was. <laughs> Close the game. I need to farm, but I'll do it later. Can do it from my phone. That most definitely was like, still can't believe they just ended of like, oh yeah, the island is getting attacked, by the way. Anyway, to be continued. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the fuck? What do you mean? That's how it ends. <laughs> what do you mean? That's how it ends. Talk about a bombshell, real. <laughs> oh, like, it's like, it's like, what, 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> the setup to a story. What will happen to Vertin and the gang? Then we get a setup to Vienna. Yeah, exactly. Because that, isn't that the next story chapter with Marcus and and everything? Well, because I know she's coming, eventually. I know she's gonna be playable. I'm saving for her. And their transition to mommy bot, yeah. 
Like, goddamn, Lucy, woo. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> What's up? Why are you meowing? Main story chapter, I think so. I don't see any news to not get spoiled. Yeah, me neither. I'm just, I just kind of get from what my, my friends tell me. I'm just like, okay, what, which characters are coming? So I know who to say for. She heard Lucy mention that's why she was me. I was just, just like me for real. <laughs> valid, valid. God damn, I hope to, I hope to, we, I hope we get to see more of Lucy for no, for no real reason whatsoever. <laughs> No reason, no reason, no ulterior motives whatsoever to want to see her on screen. We just like her personality, yeah, we just want to see more of her, you know, learn more of the lore. I just think she's neat. Right, Reggie? You think so too, that's why you're climbing my chair. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think she's trying to give me subtle hints that it's time to eat. So true, Reggie. <laughs> so I shall hold, I shall get off and go have lunch and then do some, do my core, do my chores that I didn't get to do this morning. So yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. We're finally caught up with Reverse 1999. Uh, I'm not going to be doing the events on a stream. So next week, instead, we're probably going back to Honka Impact 3rd. On Sunday, there's a there's the visual novel I think that I need to play. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be going back to that before like chapter two of part two releases. And um, also the the, the lo Horizon lore stream might be happening with Maple. We're just fine tuning which day to do it. And more Sonic Frontiers, of course, and more Reverse Collapse. But as always, stay tuned for the uh, schedule later today or tomorrow. Uh, once I get a, a, a clear answer when we're doing the lore thing. <sighs> so we're good, I guess. Let's go. Have fun with D&D. But yeah, thank you guys for coming. I just got here. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. But yeah, this is usually the time around which I end, especially on Sundays. I try to finish a bit earlier on Sundays to have time to do chores. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming again and hanging out with me as I finish chapter five. The boss fight was so easy now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, remember to take care of yourselves. Keep yourself safe. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. So, bye-bye.